What's up guys, Pete here. So, I made a video for you guys. This is going to be showing you what it's like if you're just a regular person and you buy VIP for the Freedom 500. So a little background, you guys know I'm from Minnesota. You can tell by the accent, a lot of you guys get a huge kick out of it. But we flew down here uh, this weekend for the Freedom 500 and for Cletus and Cars with the goal of going and having a freaking good time and here's what I'll say. We had a great time. It was well worth the trip. Now, there are some pros and there are some cons uh, to the VIP experience at the Freedom 500. Cletus and Cars, there's no VIP, so I'm not really going to touch on that. I do have a video coming out uh, what it's like to be, you know, point of view at Cletus and Cars. But the Freedom 500 overall, me and my wife both, extremely happy that we went. We had a phenomenal time. We rented a sweet car to go there and, you know, we stayed in Clearwater. That's where I'm at right now. I'm in the Airbnb. Found a wall that's perfect for making videos. But um, so, some stuff was different than we expected. Some stuff was better than we expected. And I'm going to go over some pros and cons really quick. So one of the things that I find really cool about it as a VIP, right, the atmosphere, okay? These people that buy VIP uh, for the Freedom 500, the the level of, or the quality of the people is superb and everyone is there for the same reason, to have a freaking good time. And we literally made countless friends. We met people from Connecticut, Oregon, uh, just all over the USA, which was really cool. And especially us being from Minnesota, we weren't even the oddballs. We met people from Wisconsin, Iowa, etc. So it's super cool that we have a YouTuber like Garrett that puts on these huge shows that will attract people from all over the country to come and watch what is basically a really low scale kind of car car show is basically what it is. Now, you guys might have friends that, you know, you say, oh, I'm going to go watch uh, Cletus McFarlane at the Freedom Factory or, oh, you know, you talk about it at all. And even a lot of my friends, they have no idea what I'm talking about. They've never heard of the guy. They have no idea who he is. You know, that's beside the point. But what I'm trying to say is it's extremely cool to see an average Joe go from making car content to owning a multi-million dollar facility like the Freedom Factory and all the work that's been put into it. Uh, one of the third things that's super cool is when you're watching the videos, you don't see what Garrett, the amount of work that he puts in, right? When you're there, you see the amount of work Garrett puts in. Not only is he performing in these shows, but he is busting his ass the entire time at these shows, whether it be cleaning up the track, you know, there's a fire on a car running around with his head cut off trying to solve problems. I mean, it is. it was just super cool to see somebody at that level still putting in 110% effort. So we'll switch gears here. I'm gonna talk about some of the cons, okay? And there are a few cons. The first uh, major con that I think, or major disappointment, I'm gonna say, was that my intention of buying VIP at the Freedom 500 was so that I could like get up and close and personal with the drivers, see the cars, that I could be like literally on the ground, the same ground where they're painting their cars and, you know, where they're having conversations. Now, the way it's set up is you walk into the Freedom Factory and basically there's a whole section that's gated off. That's basically the pit areas. So you guys that have been to races know what I'm talking about when I say pit areas. The pit areas are completely off limits. You don't get to cross the fence. You don't get to walk around. You don't get to go see your favorite YouTubers unless they physically come up to the fence. And you guys got to understand, these guys are busy. They're trying to prep their cars. They're trying to get stuff done. You know, it's, it's no surprise that some of them don't, you know, come up to the fence and waste you know, 30, 45 minutes, you know, chatting with fans when they got stuff to do to get ready for the performance. So there's a lot of guys there that I didn't actually get to see or talk to or even really, you know, be around their presence because they were busy with their cars. You know, they didn't come conversate with the fans, stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not going to get petty about it. Okay. But 
VIP, in, in my opinion, I think the price point should be significantly higher just to kind of deflect some of the crazies, I guess I'll say. <laughs> That's bold enough to say on the camera. But I think the price point should be higher. I think there should be less. And I think they should let them, you know, casually or periodically get into the pit area and kind of get to see more of the Freedom Factory, like the shop and, you know, like see the actual cars as they're painting them, talk to the YouTubers that are across the way, you know, the cars that are on the other side of the fence that you have no chance of even talking to. Um, another con I'm just going to bring up is the food. Now, the food's not bad, okay? It's concession food, not terrible. But the way the Freedom Factory is set up is on, you know, one side you have general, so you have general admission on one side, and then you have VIP on the other side. Now, the disadvantage is that the concessions, all the food, to my knowledge, I could be wrong on this, you guys might troll me in the comments and blow me up, but to my knowledge, all the food's made on the actual concession sign, which is side, which is GA. On the VIP side, the menu and the food availability is significantly less than it is on the general admission side. Now, granted, talking to people, I don't think the lines were as long on the VIP side, which is a plus, but they also didn't have the majority of the food that was on the menu on the VIP side. And I think that's because they had to truck it around the Freedom Factory and keep it on hot trays, etc. Now, again, the food isn't bad. It's concession food. They got burgers, hot dogs, sodas, beers, you name it. Not only that, the prices are not ridiculous. The prices are fair, okay? So I'm not picking on uh, the Freedom Factory. I'm not picking on Garrett at all for how we set that up because it's completely fair. They're not ripping you off. It's not $10 for a beer. I mean, it is phenomenal deals for the food, but, you know, I ordered two cheeseburgers when we first got there. One of the cheeseburgers, you know, was super hot. One was like cold, basically just cold, okay? Just stuff like that. And I'm not gonna sit here and talk about food for the whole video because that's absolutely pointless, all right? Um, we'll just get into the third con. The third con, and this is to be expected, this is just me, you know, my interpretation of it. The cool part about VIP is you're closer to the track, which is pretty cool. The thing that is, I guess, a little less fortunate is that you have the double fence there. So you have a fence in front of you and then you have the big, huge fence to keep all the debris and stuff like that from coming off the track. Those have to be there. I get it. They absolutely have to be there. And you're so close to the track that you're getting literally rubber on your face as the Crown Vicks are going by. It's phenomenal. But the stands that they have, they only have one small grandstand section at the VIP. And if you don't get up there right away and seal a spot, it's it's done. It's it's booked up. The other thing is it's not center on the track. It's way off to the side. So you get more of like the, I think it'd be the southern corner view. And then the other thing with that, the bleachers aren't as tall. So even if you sit at the very, very top of the VIP bleachers, you still can't really see over the fence, if that makes sense. You still have that obstruction in your view. Now, when you're sitting on the ground level, you're looking through two fences, which is even harder to kind of see. Long story short, the fences have to be there. I'm aware of that. One thing I think they could do a little better because there were two grandstands in the VIP, but one was completely sectioned off, I think, for pit crew, friends, and family, is maybe a bigger bleacher section on the VIP side. That's my opinion. Or maybe have it like a little bit closer to the food and, you know, merch area. So that's a little more center of the track or potentially build some bleachers, you know, where we were sitting, which is basically dead center on the track that are a little higher to get you over that first fence so that your view is really nice. Um, to top that off, one thing I'll state is this, when you're watching from home and you're watching the pay-per-view, you know, the video, stuff like that, your view, I'm just going to be frank with you, your view is 10 times better than it is if you actually go there to watch. However, you're gonna miss out on the crowd, you're gonna miss out on the atmosphere, you're gonna miss out you know, on a ton of stuff. So would I take it back? Absolutely not. I was talking to my wife about it, Taylor. We had a phenomenal time. We would definitely do this again. These are just my, I guess, opinions on some of the stuff that you'll encounter if you go there. And again, this video is for people 
that have never been to the Freedom Factory, never been to the Freedom 500 or even Cletus in cars, which I'm, again, I'm gonna make a video on that as well, um, just so you know what to expect when you come in there. So just to summarize that, you're not gonna get in the pits. You're not gonna get as close to your favorite YouTubers as you want to. Uh, Garrett is extremely busy. I mean, he's running around with his head cut off, but yet he will still take the time to come and try to meet and see everybody but you're gonna have to wait. That's just how it goes, which I totally respect. Uh, again, your visibility might not be as good as you thought it would be on the VIP side. Uh, the food might not be as great as you thought it was gonna be on the VIP side. And you know, overall, the, the track walk for the VIP, I think that's a huge plus. I think the fact that you even get to be that close to the YouTubers, even though there's a fence there, and get to shout at him and they will conversate you. I think that's another huge plus. So the direction it's headed is awesome. I think they're, you know, again, if there was like a VIP VIP that was like, you know, six, seven hundred dollars, thousand dollars, whatever it may be, where you could promise not to be creepy and not to bother your favorite YouTubers, but yet you could kind of be present, you know, in the whole pit area, that's something I would elect to do. So I want to know what you guys think. If you guys have been to the Freedom Factory, maybe you've never been to the Freedom Factory. If you've done VIP, if you haven't done VIP, drop a comment below and tell me what your guys' thoughts are on it. Am I being too hard on Old Cleat? Or am I not being hard enough? Or do you not want to hear me complain about it anymore? Let me know what you think. Anyways, enough talk. I have a new video out of my channel. You should go check it out. You should also like and subscribe, helps guys like me out. But uh, it's on my channel, first person experience uh, with my wife of going to the Freedom Factory uh, with VIP access. It's kind of like a vlog type video. I think you guys will get a kick out of it, you might enjoy it. Uh, you also get to see the sweet car I rented. That's gonna be it for this video. Like I said, hop on my channel, check out the other video. I also got the Cletus and Cars video coming out as well.